Lego Brick Tales is a fun puzzle game. I've played countless other Lego games ranging from Lego Incredibles all the way to Lego Lord of the Rings. There's something really calming about playing Lego games. It's just a good, satisfying experience. You know what you're gonna get? It's just a game about making Lego and bashing dudes up to create different things. But Lego Brick Tales is a little bit different than other games in the Lego catalog because in this game you have to craft so much more meticulously than any other game before. You have to place down the blocks brick by brick to solve puzzles. And this is a great idea, something that really appealed to me and many other people I'm sure, and they really explored it to the maximum extent, leading to both things I enjoy and don't enjoy about the game. Some of the things I do enjoy, I enjoy the environments, there's a lot of attention to detail in every world that you explore, a lot of meticulous planning went into making sure they all seem authentic to an actual Lego experience, they all feel believable in that they feel like if you had the parts you could create these landscapes. There's a decent amount of variety in the environments, ranging from deserts to jungles to temples and pirate islands. The building is satisfying and definitely scratches the itch that I was looking for when initially looking at the game's store page. I imagine building solutions to various puzzles and solving them, and that's exactly what the game is, to a T. Maybe to its own detriment sometimes. Some of the puzzles require a decent amount of brain power, a lot of the building requires some out of the box thinking to get to work and there is no real perfect solution. I feel like a lot of the solutions to puzzles can be tackled in different ways. There is of course an optimum way to do things but you can a lot of the times just hack your way to the solution. It doesn't have to be pretty as long as it gets the job done. And they do play on the fact that there are so many ways to customize your minifigures. I did enjoy this, you find currency throughout the world and that allows you to unlock cosmetics in the different worlds. Although I think they didn't play this to the full strength of the idea. I think they could have went so much further with this because there is a lack of cosmetics in the game. I would have liked to have gone crazy with customizing my character and there's not that many different pieces to collect for customizing your character unfortunately. As for things that I wasn't a huge fan of, I was not really inspired by locations in the game. I think they could have went crazy with the locations of the game and went to all kinds of wacky worlds and instead they kind of went to like the standard generic themes that you find in a lot of puzzle games like you got a desert level, you got a jungle level you've got a town level like I feel like with Lego the possibilities are kind of endless and you could just go anywhere and they kind of just went to standard generic locations which was a bit of a shame the game is also basically just endless fetch quests one after another in every world you're doing kind of the same thing the characters in the game want something they can't get to it you have to build a way to get to that thing to help them out that's kind of like how every single quest goes they lack something you build it i do wish they could have innovated a tiny bit like i feel like they could have there is different things you could have done with the building in the game like different kinds of quests the story is kind of weak and whimsical i know it's a lego game and then like the expectation of a story isn't amazing but like this is also a chance to explore a story that's not tied down to an ip you have no expectations of a story here so you could have done literally anything and the story we do get is really nothing special it's kind of just an excuse to f visit generic worlds it could have been so much more interesting the game does settle into a rut in terms of gameplay after about the first or second world you kind of know what you're going to expect for the rest of the game and it doesn't really deviate too much from that they do add in some extra abilities for you to give you a excuse to revisit worlds and collect things but the collectibles aren't really that fun so i didn't find myself really wanting to chase down every single collectible like i have done in previous lego games usually when i play a lego game it's just a good reliable game to 100%. You just play get play the game through unlocking everything and then go back through and get everything from the beginning. That's kind of the way that I tackle every Lego game. And this one I just really wasn't that compelled to go through and get collectibles. There were a few puzzles that I felt were too difficult, like two or three that I actually had to look up a solution to because I tried for like half an hour on some of these and could not even get remotely close to what the game expected of me. And that might just be me being dumb because I'm not the smartest when it comes to puzzle games, but at the same time I feel like it should be accessible to everyone and some of these puzzles just felt like you had to exactly know what they wanted of you and build it that specific way. 
Overall, I do feel like it was a fun game with a fun idea that just was not expanded enough. I feel like with LEGO, there is so much you can do. The platform for creativity with LEGO has always been massive, and I just don't think they really expanded enough to fit the idea. Maneater is a game about being a shark and eating people, and I never thought a game like that could be boring. But unfortunately, here I am, bored when I think about Maneater. I've tried to finish this game a few times, and each time I felt myself kind of getting bored with the game, and this time I figured I'd just sit down and finish it. So I did. I sat down and grinded through the game from start to finish, and I found that my initial impression of the game wasn't too far off how the game is throughout its entire runtime. As for things I liked, I like the idea of being a shark. I like the idea of being that boogeyman in the night that kills and eats things it's really fun for gameplay that idea in games has been around for ages and it's just a fun one being the monster in a world where so many people fear sharks it's fun to be the thing that you're afraid of going under the water eating things leveling up becoming stronger and bigger that idea is fun unfortunately i don't think the game really knew what to do with that idea the world is interesting, with, there's a lot of interesting locations and easter eggs. The world is varied, each of the zones feels different from each other, with different enemy types and locations. The design of the shark is cool, collecting different body parts to level up like an RPG was fun. And the narrator for the game, played by the voice actor for Jerry from Rick and Morty, was great. Other than the fact that he never shut up through the entire game. I don't think he was quiet for more than like a minute throughout the entire game. It's just one of those games where you just have a narrator talking for the entire thing. So if you don't like that, you're probably going to be turned off the game pretty quick. I did tend to just tune him out after a while. It just became some of the background noise to the game while I was eating various creatures and leveling up. As for things I think the game didn't do so well, the combat is one of them. And the combat is kind of like the entire game, so... I just don't really know how they expected people to find the combat for this game fun over a long stretch of time. Because it just becomes button mashing. <laughs> you've got two attacks, you've got your mouth button, which is your biting and eating button, and then you've got your tail button, which is your bash button. And the bash does so much less damage than anything else that it is barely worth using. So I just found myself chomping down on everything throughout the entire game, and that strategy never really let me down. And you may think that sounds kind of boring, and it kind of is. Like any game where you have one button for combat and that's it can become pretty boring pretty quick. And this game, I really expected there to be different combos and different abilities and stuff to make the game interesting but aside from like one ability that you get that is class specific based on what kind of shark you are it kind of is nothing you just bash away at people eating them through the entire game and i was kind of let down by that fact the game really is a huge open world checklist for the people that don't like open worlds where you just do the same thing over and over and over again, that is this game to a T. You do the exact same thing in every single zone with some story missions sprinkled in which are just basically the same thing because all of the story missions basically come down to finding something and eating something. There is collectibles throughout the entire world, a lot of different creatures to eat that give you various different currencies to upgrade your shark and it's one massive grind that became very stale and very boring very quickly. I'm used to doing open world checklists. I kind of find it therapeutic sometimes to explore an open world and to uncover all its secrets. Like a lot of people have problems with the Assassin's Creed series in the last couple entries. Myself, I find it kind of therapeutic and fun to explore a giant world and find everything there is to find. If I was doing the exact same thing in those games every single minute of the game, I would probably feel the same way as other people do and drop it. But in this game, I just feel like they could have done more. Again, wasted potential. The story is not very interesting at all. It is just a revenge story. You play as a shark whose family was killed by fishermen, and then you spend that entire game hunting down the friends of the fishermen to then kill the fishermen at the end. That's that's a story from start to finish. It does, doesn't deviate from that. Upgrades are not actually that exciting. I expected the game to have some crazy upgrade trees that you could really expand into that make the shark just really scary and weird and wacky. And there's maybe like five or six different like upgrade sets for the shark that do different things and 
really a couple of them are not worth using at all with one of them just being the best one which is the bone armor because it does extra damage to ships and like since you're fighting bad guys in boats the entire game that's really the only armor set that you need there's no reward for getting collectibles in this game there's no extra skins there's nothing like that it just get collectibles and that's it it gives you a little bit of currency which again leads into an upgrade system that wasn't that exciting I generally tend to give stories and games and movies a pass for most of the time if it's entertaining but this game was not entertaining therefore I just didn't find myself engrossed in the humor of the writing at all and on top of that, the boss fight at the end was just kind of frustrating. It took me a long time to figure out what the game wanted me to do, and then when I figured it out, it took an even longer time for me to actually do it. It was just a grindy boss fight that took me a lot of time, not even a lot of time dying, just a lot of time trying to do what the game wanted me to do. And I ended the, the game just feeling more frustrated than excited about any part of it. So overall, Man Eater was a bit of a letdown. I was kind of excited to play this game for a long time because I thought it was a sh RPG about being a shark, and it technically is, but just not in any of the ways that I find fun. Lastly, American Arcadia was really really fun and made up for man eater in every possible way i love games that have a great story and premise and american arcadia delivered on just about everything that i could want from a game like this i don't want to spoil the story because it's kind of a story that has a really good twist that you want to experience for yourself and the twist is what makes it fun and they really run with it throughout the entire game I really enjoy games like Inside and Little Nightmares where you're running away from things and solving puzzles. That style of game has always appealed to me because you can just do so much with it. And in this game, they really followed through. It follows that similar gameplay theme of always running to the left, always running to the right, but also throws in a lot of first person levels that you have to traverse as well and do a bunch of other puzzles as well. So I found that was great for breaking up the gameplay and adding some spice to it. The characters were really fun and really well performed, which was great. When you have a story like this, it's awesome when you have voice actors that can convey emotions and get you invested in the story. And this had some great voice acting from start to finish. I want to give a shout out to Yuri the actor that plays spider-man that everyone knows he's great i love him whenever i hear him in anything and in this game he just had a, a chance to shine in a character the visuals and presentation were top notch again the visual tile style for me was a 10 out of 10 i love it when games have a unique visual style or a unique theme and they just go all the way with it they don't hold back they just go all the way it doesn't have to be realistic in any way it can just go with the theme and run with it i love it the story had plenty of twists to keep me engaged it wasn't just a straightforward story it had me guessing a lot of the time at how it was going to go and while i wasn't 100 percent satisfied with the payoff which we'll talk about in a little bit i do think the twists were enough to keep any player that's in good invested in a good story engaged the gameplay was simple but enjoyable again it's just running from left to right solving various puzzles none of which were too uh hard to do as well which was great they were at that perfect level of fun and entertaining but leaving you a little bit confused at the beginning till you figure it out giving you that aha moment which is just what i look for in puzzle games i don't want to be sitting there for half an hour trying to solve a math quiz i want a puzzle that gives me a little bit of challenge but nothing that breaks the flow music was great throughout the entire thing really enjoyed it start to finish there were some parts of the game that were trial and error not really puzzles but some parts of the game where you had to figure out what to do in a gameplay sense and it took me a few tries to figure out what the game wanted for me not enough to make me frustrated in any way just enough for me to mention it the game did crash a few times unfortunately which was a bit of a shame there were times where i was really invested in the story and the game did crash but it does have a pretty robust checkpoint system so i never lost too much progress and now i'm going to talk about the ending again no spoilers because the ending's definitely an ending that does need to be experienced and i don't want to spoil it but i do want to say it was a bit of a letdown for me. I feel like the ending was kind of the culmination of the entire story and it just didn't give a lot of satisfaction. It just didn't follow through in the way that I wanted it to. It didn't give enough of a kind of after story to really give me like I've invested a lot of time in these characters. I wanted to know after it kind of just climaxed, ended, and then kind of petered out a bit, which is unfortunate because I feel like it could have done a bit more with the ending. But who knows, maybe we'll get a sequel. That'd be awesome. 
Anyway, those are the games that I played last month. Let me know what you've been playing down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you, beautiful people, in the next video.